characteristics of stall feeding of sheep and goat goat have been selective in nature but they feed with wide range of vegetation it may be because of the prolin rich proteins present in their oral cavity so that also help in uh, this in the saliva that helps in uh, eating wide range of vegetation and also many of the waste materials but though sheep are non selective in nature they depend on a little bit less variety of vegetation now they are considered as the best alternative in meat sector chevron is mostly preferred in northern india and mutton is southern india because mutton is having a little bit more of fatty tissue that gives it a test little bit tastier than goat meat that is chevron most of the persons who want to prefer lean meat they prefer this chevron Uh, in orissa actually black bengal goat do not sub- produce sufficient milk for feeding three or four uh, this kids they feed because tri- twinning and triplets even quadruplets are common in black bengal goats that is why actually for milk producing goats and sheep they have to be given particular nutrients so that their milk production will be optimum and the kids or lamb will get sufficient of milk milk producing animals they have to be given certain importance and also for milk production actually phosphorus is also having very uh, high importance because calcium is nearly supplemented uh, through our ration why this eating is necessary as they are warm blooded animals they have to keep their body temperature in the particular range that is why requires very good amount of energy and also for day to day metabolic activities and also tissue repair so for day to day maintenance they require a very much amount energy and also some amount of protein and for the growth actually mostly the nitrogen and sulfur they are the most needed part in the ration because some part of nitrogen they may give gain from protein nitrogen also but their sulfur and nitrogen Uh, has to be sufficient in their ration so that their uh, rumen metabolism will be sub- uh, rumen fermentation will be optimal and the bi- microbial growth will be optimal so that nitrogen and uh, this microbial nitrogen and also bypass nitrogen should be available for the goat and they will be having enough amount of growing tissue so that th- their growth can be optimal the animal is at production stage we give them importance but that is not in the case because we have to give equal importance to every stage of the animal because uh, their genetic potential cannot be completed without uh, the uh, active ingredients at every phase suppose uh, while production of semen or production of ovum if the zinc copper and certain uh, this micronutrients are not given in sufficient amounts and also energy is deficient then conception will be difficult and also the gene expression in the child may be it in the womb or while in producing stage it will not be proper uh, particular minerals and particular nutrients are there uh, different stage of life that for health actually like supply of zinc supply of selenium and vitamin e and some of the antioxidants actually they are needed in various stage of life like suppose we are moving the kid or we are moving the animals from one place to other then at that time besides micro minerals and some of the major minerals like phosphorus we have to give them most of the micro minerals along with that selenium vitamin e and also this chromium without them we have to reduce its potential when it will be transported to another place i have been finding in uh, our state orissa that reproduction potential is very much lower in terms of explaining uh, that how it will gain its body weight and also reproduce because they are not getting enough of this either energy and also not getting enough of this micronutrients so that is why the eating is most necessary to have all the nutrients so we are feeding carbohydrates from mostly cereals and brands but uh, actually for protein sources their microbes do a major role along with our supply from pulses 
oil seed cakes in Chunu. Then also some of the fat tissue fat has to be given, but nowadays most of the oil seed cakes they do not have oils like previously the explorer uh, protein sources were having uh, these oils. Vitamins are having two types and they have a different role like uh, fat soluble vitamins like ADEK. Human has certain capacity to produce certain B vitamins except only a few. Uh, many of the mineral supplement mostly I have we have seen that in the liquid supplements this phosphorus, copper and zinc are mostly deficient. We have to take into care that which mineral mixture we should recommend and which not. Then about certain uh, this roughage, actually roughage is integral part of ration. If an animal is not taking roughage in sufficient amounts, there may be change in uh, this ruminal fermentation pattern. Then water, actually water is the most essential uh, part which we forget many times. Water is the most essential ingredient and that is having a very much role in rumen fermentation and every other part. Then in the balance feeding, we have to take account into right amount, right time and right combinations. And right amount is essential, but if not fed at the right time, then it is not being uh, misutilized as such. And that will be helping their ruminal microbes to get adjusted into that. Many a times it is seen that calcium and phosphorus proportion is very different in different uh, mineral mixtures when seen exact way. So that has to be seen. And most uh, important part is that the goats, they are so much specific that they, they will not eat any trampled fodder or feed. Then uh, that what is a ration? Ration is actually any food or feed allowance that is given in a particular day. So one day food allowance is called ration. But diet is not the one day food allowance. But it is the sum of food or feed consumed by a person or organization. Then about this forage. Actually the difference between forage and fodder is that Forage means they will graze, they will go to that place and they will eat by browsing or grazing. But fodder is that we'll cut that fodder and we'll be taking that fodder to the animal and that animal will be eating that at that at his own place. And this leg leguminous fodders, actually they are given more importance that may be a seed, may be pod or any other edible part. But that part means legume fodder, one problem is that they have a little bit less amount of energy and also they will have more amount of water in it. And uh, sheep may prefer that, but goats will not prefer a uh, forage or fodder that is having high amount of moisture. And cereal fodder, actually it is very good in energy, so that also we have to see. And then what is the difference between stall feeding and conventional feeding? Actually, in stall feeding, we have to supply the nutrients because the animal cannot graze in the particular field. So he or she cannot choice the animal, choice the order, what is giving, uh, means what is there in the field. But here we have to give all the nutrients supplied. So that is one of the most important thing that uh, we have to either make TMR or make anything that will supplement all the nutrients to that animal. Uh, they have to be given exercise either through tethering or open paddock or anything because without exercise the animal's natural thing will be a problem. And goats like browsing, but sheep like grazing. So they have to be given the forages according to that. If uh, the goats will not be given uh, forages by either through hanging or through placing at a certain place, then there will be problem. And nowadays because of stall feeding, actually there is problem in also hoops and that needs biotin supplementation. Then there is very need of planting perennial fodder tree. There a very good source of fodder or certain other shady trees. But neem tree is very good in the aspect that uh, it's uh, when we feed them, feed the neem leaves uh, in a very less amount also to the animals, 
that also help in controlling some of the parasites internal parasites and also for any uh, many of the diseases like uh, fungal disease and also the skin diseases they are being also checked very much and the uh, as we discussed the legume fodder has to be uh, means about 30 to 40% of the fodder and uh, that uh, non legume has to be 60 to 70% in uh, summer time they have to be fed under stress otherwise means their feeding will be lower and also problem uh, in many aspects and if the vitamin a uh, means it's not given properly if they will be feeding only in certain dry forage and also feed then there may be problem of uh, this night blindness or also uh, so they have to be given vitamin a injections uh, so that they can be cured from this uh, vitamin a deficiency then uh, let us go into the basics of uh, feeding first thing is that water is nearly about six, more than 60% of us so in both uh, animals and human beings uh, we need to see that we are drinking sufficient water or not and in addition we grow through addition of protein fat is also essential thing in addition to giving us energy storage and minerals we can see nearly same and animals should consume the sea salt that is more or better if that is deficient in iodine the area then we can uh, additionally supplement iodine as we can see that here uh, there are this uh, vitamins and also minerals every time this zinc is the most deficient nutrient in both plants and also animals and in animals actually this is these have major role in also reproduction and production aspect selenium and vitamin e they are mainly used as antioxidants along with copper and zinc they are very playing a very major role vitamin a will have major role along with them so that uh, the animal body can perform everything good and this calcium and phosphorus along with vitamin d it will be mainly required for its bone and muscle contraction and nervous system stimulation and the role of actually magne manganese this iron uh, you all know about these things saliva is very much important not only in stabilizing the ph but also it helps in actually lubrication and many aspects but in uh, ruminants actually this is a very major role in stabilizing the ph of rumen because that is the utmost necessary and that is why water should be available plentifully and in winter actually the water should be a little bit warm because rumen p rumen uh, temperature that rumen fluid it nearly about 39.1 degree centigrade and even if we can give a little bit uh, salt to that then the appetite increases first 3 to 4 months of life of goat actually that is the most important period of a goat so because at that time whatever the goat eats the feed eats or lamb eats that will be directly going into this its body because in ruminants it will be converted into microbial protein and that will not be directly used our digestion process takes about 2 hours but in rumen it takes about 3 to 4 days means 30 uh, this 72 to 96 hours for in ruminants it is seen that in the most of the this rumen microbes will feed in that and they will be going into reticulum and there they will be sieved so those part of undigested feed some of the undegradable protein that is rumen undegradable protein and also rumen undegradable fat and others those will be going into this third part and not the others then after this degradation uh, this uh, after uh, here they will be going into the last part that is true stomach ruminant uh, stomach that abomasum they will be degrading the mainly microbial mass and also some of the undegradable protein and carbohydrates and fat so we can see that uh, in the rumen actually nearly about 100 billion bacteria in 1 ml of fluid is there and also protozoa and fungus so they will be degrading and nearly about 7000 species are anaerobic species are there and out of which uh, means they are having different functions means whenever we are providing many fibrous feed then if fibrous feed is more then fibrolytic bacteria population will be increasing 
but if starch material is more then amylolytic bacteria will be increasing likewise if protein concentrated is more like legumes we are feeding more then proteolytic bacteria will be more but if fat is a little bit good percentage then lipolytic bacteria will be more that is why means we should never change the feed rapidly if we are also moving one animal to another place then we should never change means we should feed at least a week to what owner was feeding previously then slowly and slowly actually we will be changing its diet so we cannot change it abruptly if we are changing then it will be not able to scavenge oxygen and also the high hydrogen production and uh, utilization will not be proper and we can see fungus fungus have different role like they will be uh, getting into this many fibers and also normal uh, parts and they will be uh, mis degrading them and some of the fungus they also degrade starch if we are giving npn compounds like uh, ammonia or urea then that must be supplemented with readily available carbohydrates because ammonia will be produced very fast rate that rate if starch is not being provided it also for bacterial cell wall or and also bacterial protein synthesis sulfur has to be given in sufficient amount otherwise there will be problem in trapping this ammonia and ammonia toxicity may appear whenever we supply certain good amount of highly degradable protein we have to supply good amount of carbohydrate and also the sulfur and um, similar certain things and minerals and so and for carbohydrate carbohydrates also it is degraded into bfas like acetate propionate and butyrate but many persons are advocating not utilizing fibers more but if we are not giving straw and some uh, fiber more of fibrous tissue then rumen feel will not be there and rumen will be there may be distortion in the abomasum and also many problems will be there so that is why actually fibrous tissue um, is fibrous uh, feed must be accompanying our concentrates and we can see in the high forage diet high ph cellulose uh, will be, uh, high ph will be uh, there but in high concentrate diet ph will be low and that will be reducing the number of cellulitic and hemicellular bacteria so if we are feeding more of grains today and we will be feeding less of grains tomorrow then there will be disturbance in the uh, this ruminal fermentation pattern that is why actually we have to feed in a balanced manner here we can see the gases accumulate at the topmost part of rumen and microbes being attached in the middle part of it and more in the solution part actually microbes all the microbes are in action so most of the things this thing will be completed nearly about 3 to 4 days if the animal is having anorexia then we have to see we have to supplement with enzyme first of all we have to stabilize the ph if uh, acidosis is there we have to supply uh, soda uh, this baking soda or so but that uh, along with that we have to add in uh, this action of the microbes like producing giving them either cellulose hemicellulose pectinase if the animal is having more of uh, our fibrous feeds then we can see bypass nutrients like proteins and uh, fats actually they have to be given in the animal when it is more than 4 months of age they will help in improving the fertility and also availability of nutrients will be very good and even at the time of parturition after parturition we will give a little bit more of bypass nutrients they also help in uh, getting its metabolism proper then some of these bypass nutrient help in also internal parasite control like tannin saponin etc which are rich so this is the most essential part in the kid actually uh, abomasum or fourth chamber is the only part that is mostly active and there is in the esophageal group actually milk will go into the third part like that omasum and there it will go into abomasum but in the uh, elder animal uh, above four months of age rumen is the most developed part and here the ruminal mode of digestion is there so we have to see that in the lamb stage or kid stage in the first 3 to 4 months of life we have to give them good crib feed and good feed 
so that the animal will be developing getting the most essential nutrients at this most uh, functional time and then it will be having a uh, good growth rate and uh, coming to uh, this feeding part actually because goats are browsers but sheep are grazers so they will be grazing uh, even of the small small uh, grass also but goats are uh, goats will never do that so we must actually give them uh, in that way see miss goat uh, should never give, be given in in uh, ground otherwise they will make them trample on them and they will not eat them and they must have to be provided with either rock salt or salt leaks so that it will be better uh, actually tmr as it was seen that it has to be very uh, adequately given to one good thing is that uh, mineral mixer is area specific mineral mixer is good but if you are not getting area specific mineral mixer because uh, um i have many questions on that because many of the area specific mineral mixers they are not working in that efficiently because in even in a small area this areas are being uh, in some area in upper part of a hill one mineral is deficient in lower part of a hill another mineral is deficient so many a times we have to concern that this phosphorus copper zinc these three minerals they must have been in sufficient amount in that mineral mixer and not chelated minerals in adequate amount because if it is a very small goat and not uh, having very good potential then chelated mineral feeding is having a higher weightage in monogastric animals and in uh, ruminants actually if the animal is producing very high means its growth rate is very high or its uh, production is in uh, suppose dairy animals production is more than 10 liters then we should advocate chelated minerals otherwise this will not be having very good effect then that water is very much essential and uh, to both us and others and in uh, cold water should not be offered but normal water we should offer in even in summer we should offer the normal water uh, underground water or any well water or anything but we should not offer the cold water only except certain circumstances because they are not very good because the rumen when it is developed the this temperature has to be 39.1 otherwise there will be problem so this new nutrient synchronization will not be also proper all the microbes will not be properly fed and they will not be given proper if a kid is fed in the morning after that uh, all the you and do they have to be given sufficient amount of water and also feed if we are feeding them in a very late time their problem will be that their uh, this metabolism uh, the rumen fermentation will be improper so rumen fermentation should be given in importance and they should not be kept off feed very large very large time and water should be very uh, good amount it should be offered and for reproduction actually as we can see that copper iron co uh, this uh, uh, copper iron cobalt manganese phosphorus zinc along with vitamin ad3 e what i have seen that if we are giving vitamin ad3 e nearly minimum uh, twice a year but i recommend four times in a year if we are offering to both our this uh, males and also this uh, females then actually what it does that it uh, nearly makes this uh, all the functions like reproductive productive and also metabolic um, normal metabolism very uh, means better way and production and reproduction also improves that we can ask to make their own feed because most of the feed what we are getting they are having npn compounds mostly urea so that causes a nearly problem because we don't give them adequate amount of starch or other starchy things and also sulfur into the diet and that is why rumen metabolism is problem so that is why we have to make our own product how we can do that there is three um, it's only just simple rule that we have to give them 2% of mineral mixture and 1% salt to everyone means from the kid up to the adult or dry we should offer 3% in 100 gram, 100 kilo gram of feed that we have to make it three part one part is that that is grains like our uh, oat 
बाली बाजरा और एनी और स्मेज और ब्रोकन सरेल्स लाइक राइस और इवन व्हीट दैट वी कैन गिव बट वी कैन रेस्ट्रिक्ट इट इन इट इन टू 30 टू 50 परसेंट सो मिनिमम वन थर्ड शुड बी फ्रॉम आवर दिस सरेल ग्रेन्स एंड देन वन थर्ड शुड बी फ्रॉम बाय प्रोडक्ट्स लाइक व्हीट ब्रान our rice bran uh, this should be taken as 20 to 40% and then actually it comes that protein part protein part means it may be oil cakes or uh, any this cakes in addition to chunni that either biri uh, chunni or moong chunni or any of the residential residential product that is uh, from the grains and even we can give the grains suppose it is a kid or it is a pregnant animal if the uh, pulse is having a little bit lower rate we can include that even uh, pulses that is remaining in the market that is smaller smaller part of the pulses that is having very less cost so how to give because uh, our green fodders they have nearly about 20 to 40% mineral mixture this leaves contain a little bit more means uh, dry matter this leaves contain nearly about Uh, 30 25 to 35 40% of dry matter but our this uh, leaves uh, this uh, grasses contain nearly borsim contains nearly about 10% to 12 13% uh, even uh, may go up to 20% but it is at a later stage but uh, we can see in the other grasses they are having 20 to 25% of dry matter in it so we can replace Uh, did that grass into uh, from concentrate as we are telling that we can uh, miss uh, the perennial grass uh, perennial trees we can add but how to produce this concentrate how to get this concentrate suppose we have put the all the ingredients first of all what we have to take suppose we are taking we are making a mineral mixture then it should not be left in the open air because mineral mixture if it is uh, have the sunlight uh, it falls into that or it is high temperature is there then uh, there may be uh, uh, this oxidation of this uh, certain uh, this mineral this vitamin what uh, next we have to do is that if we mix the mineral and vitamin in hold the feed then there will be problem so that is why what we have to do first of all we take a ground thing like this uh, either maize or uh, white bran we take that 10 kg suppose you are preparing 100 kg then let us take 10 kg of that then what we do we can mix the mineral mixture 2 kg and salt 1 kg then we mix it properly after mixing it properly then only we add all the other ingredients and then mix so that the mineral uh, mineral vitamin mixture and also salt they will not be kept at one place and they will be mixed into all the places if uh, the female sheep and goat they will not be fed enough of energy um, best uh, thing and uh, then there will be pregnancy toxemia and also there uh, this uh, because protein requirement is somewhat fulfilled by rumen microbes but not the energy requirement therefore we have to give them I mean, if one person is giving wheat bran or uh, only then we can tell them that please add the miss uh, make wheat bran half but please add half of uh, this maize or any other grain that is available but rice grain we should give uh, broken rice we give a little bit less amount because they, they have very highly fermentable carbohydrates that whenever we are feeding if we can feed tmr it is okay means if we are feeding uh, if we are mixing the feed along with the dry roughage and also the fodders but what we must do that we should cough them we should chaff them why to chaff because if you are chaffing them then the, the fungus or the other microbes they will gain means the surface area will be gained and in that surface area they will be acting in a rapid manner so that is why that we have to do and we can take anything this uh, i think uh, all these things like either broken cereals or these things or by products and also chunni or cakes they are available everywhere and along with that if we, we can add certain legume fodder we can add certain non legume fodder and we can add certain straw 
then it will uh, straw or even some uh, other means this residues then it will become a very good order what to go to will be eat uh, eating that it will be eating about 3 to 4% of body matter uh, body weight rgdm so we have to see that uh, may, this uh, normal goat they eat about maximum 4% but while lactating because for milk production they have to be offered about 400 to 450 gram if it is sheep then we have to offer a little bit more about 450 gram per kilo meal because it is having high density uh, nutrients we can see here it is a ration in kid actually we can give crossed maize good amount and even in the pulses and oil cakes in a high amount in addition to you can add a little bit more of mineral mixture and less of common stuff but in growing animals actually the there should be good amount of oil cakes and pulses along with that crossed maize is a little less but it has to be good otherwise this both energy and this protein amount should be in a good way but in pregnant animals actually we can keep a little bit less protein but uh, the energy should be medium but in lactating animals the energy should be a little bit higher because they have to produce milk and it requires uh, miss uh, high energy for production and for uh, this uh, dry animals actually they may be given more of a little bit wheat bran and less of this uh, and even we can decrease the cost by adding more of chumi into it so we should uh, see the cost of feed ingredients and locally we should make because whatever things are present uh, to that place we should use them and all the nutrient contents we should know nowadays it is also happening that they are giving in the feed they are adding uh, urea other thing they are adding also uh, this uh, sand and also other particles and also they are adding actually even moisture into that means they are using high moisture feeds also and it is uh, we are this, the farmer is purchasing very uh, this water in minimum uh, cost so that is also little bit problem that uh, some of the mineral mixers they are containing only calcium carbonate and calcium oxide calcium carbonate is having higher bioavailability than calcium oxide but calcium oxide is very much cheaper so they are using more of calcium but less of phosphorus which is creating problem in assimilating and uh, means absorption so that is why actually we should see that uh, uh, miss what they are giving if dcp is giving it is good but it will uh, make the cost very high minimum and maximum restriction actually it is also there why how we can do that suppose uh, we are including more of uh, starchy foods like uh, readily available starch foods like our uh, this uh, rice broken rice then it becomes the starch will be become very much high was very speedily available or rapidly available so at that time if we are not giving enough of sulfur or nitrogen into that then the microbes will not be able to trap that uh, this energy so that is why it will be lost to the farmer who will feeding so that is why we have to see this uh, that what should be the maximum or minimum feeding even it is being said that dry distillers rains or uh, even means say that uh, many waste like uh, tomato waste or even vegetable waste we are feeding to the animals but we have to see that if we are offering one day too much and the another day very less then it create problem so that is why we should see this thing and we should uh, means uh, take the opportunity to let them know that what should be fed in what amount like we, if we are feeding neem uh, leaves to the animals it is good but if too much uh, too much of the leaves fed one day then the animal may become off feed so that is why we have to see what to feed and what to not in uh, by products we may give according to area that flushing ration and challenge feeding means at the time of when sperm and ovum is being ready for uh, miss making a child at that time the sperm should get sufficient amount of zinc copper and all the essential nutrients and also energy so that semen will be pro prepared properly and semen motility will be good and also semen structure will be good so that it will be better but if you are not giving in that way then it will be getting more problem because if 
the genetic material of the animal is not proper when the local buck or ram is crossed with others then it creates a different type of problems in some uh, kids will not grow rapidly some kids will not consume proper amount of food and second thing is that maternal inheritance is a most this maternal care is most uh, mother has to be taken care of in a proper way and here what we generally do that before 15 days before feeding uh, before breeding and 15 day after breeding in states where small animals like black bengal type animals are there then there is two breeding season in a year but for uh, this big animals like jamuna pari shirohi beetle only one uh, season or most maximum uh, we get three kids uh, per uh, two years so we should advise that crossing ration most i have uh, given here 50 to 250 but usually it should be more than 200 then only the animal will be uh, stepped up and its reproduction uh, potential will be very good and the it will promote the body weight because body weight is most essential for breeding so colostrum feeding actually it is it must be there that many a persons are not uh, giving the fast milk they are draining out the fast milk and then only feeding so that is why actually colostrum uh, must be fed within 24 hour at the best it is possible because within 6 to for so six hours actually all the immunoglobulins they can pass the barrier git barrier but after that the barrier will be slowly starting so we can give at the earliest as possible and second thing is that they have to be kept at a good place and if the colostrum is not available then we can use the cup colostrum from a cow or we can give two whole egg along with 20 to 30 ml castor oil and 20 ml cod liver oil or bimeral we can give along with some warm water then also it can replace but it will not 100% replace so that is why colostrum should be fed to the calf minimum four times a day but if it is more than it is better means minimum at two hours uh, interval it should be fed bitter because it is like uh, os kid develops at rapid rate at the last one to one month uh, one and half months of age at that time it has to be offered sufficient energy in addition to that blood making uh, minerals and vitamins and also bone making that essential nutrients like zinc copper and all the essential vitamins if vitamin a3 is given properly then the kid development will be in a very good rate uh, in at that time actually green fodder should be supplemented and that should be good quality if a little bit leguminous and uh, non leguminous ribbon then it will be very good a succulent is good but too much succulent means uh, the goats will not be preferring too much of succulent fodder because water content if it is high then goat uh, prefer a little bit less then if uh, adequate energy is less then pregnancy toxemia may occur you have to give at least means about 200 g of concentrate but that should be offered in divided doses means if uh, we are giving any concentrate if it is given in divided doses it is better goat diet goat or sheep diet that total amount of cp it should not be less than 6% then azula azula is very rich in uh, this both protein and minerals but it should be little bit uh, dried in a uh said before feeding to the goats and they uh, release it a little bit less than actually uh, cattle they have concentrate need of nearly about 400 to 450 g per liter of milk produced suppose uh, jamuna pari and uh, barbari and beetle they are producing a little bit good amount of milk and if we are not uh, giving them enough amount of uh, feed to them then milk production will also be hampered and also the uh, body functions will hampered and for maintenance for 100 kg actually we are giving nearly about uh, 0.5 kg means for 10 kg animals uh, 50 to 60 g must be given for its maintenance maintenance requirement should be about a little bit more than 500 uh, g per 100 kg body weight production requirement is mostly about uh, for milk 
this will be 400 to 450 gram. But uh, what the further problem is there? Actually, we can give rice bean or suba bowl, or even nowadays we are preferring certain uh, persons are preferring that sweet potato leaves. And there are so many vegetable leaves, legume vegetable leaves or pulses plants. They are also having a very good amount of proteins and uh, other things. So we have to give them properly so that actually our animal is uh, requirements are being fulfilled. If the roughage is very poor, suppose we don't have uh, non-legume roughage, then we must increase a little bit the concentrate mixture. Fiber content should be optimal. Below optimal means our diet degradation will not be proper and animal will not fit properly. And legumes should not constitute whole the fodder. So both non-legume fodder like barley, wheat, uh, uh, our any plant we can give and never ever in change the dry matter. Before parturition, we can increase a little bit amount of uh, mis min, uh, this concentrate. So that what will happen? that after parturition, its feed intake will be nearly about a little bit maintained. Otherwise, if the feed intake is very poor in the below parturition, that animal will not take proper amount of feed uh, after parturition because nearly about 30% decrease will be there in intake. And so that is why actually if we can increase in a pre-parturition, pre then it is good. And at that time also what we can do that decrease a little bit uh, mineral mixture at the last time of before parturition, uh, one week or 14 days before parturition, so that it will be uh, means adapting to meal fever and other problems. Water should be most lactating animals are thirsty and hungry before after feeding. So after milking or after feeding to the young, they will become hungry and also thirsty. And high protein and high oil seed diet, actually there should be oil and protein should be balanced after this lactation. And also energy will be optimal because without a good energy, it will be a problem. Good quality hay, even borsim and lucerne or any other good forage, if it is available in a high quantity at certain place, then we can make it a hay because they do not prefer much of the silage, but prefer hay. So we can give, make it a hay and we can feed. As we discussed previously, that please offer warm water and also that the maize should be given after boiling if it is possible. Otherwise, means this uh, and ground maize is not good for women. So a little bit less ground, means a little bit coarse maize should be given. And uh, this animal should eat properly. And uh, that should be avoid overfeeding and underfeeding. Actually, overfeeding happens because most of the persons now prefer concentrate. Even not concentrate, they give uh, adequate maize and wheat bran. And they say that it is okay. We should offer our animals uh, ruminants in such a way that everything is there. Avoid an urine and uh, water uh, stagnation because it, uh, and even feces. What it does that uh, all the micro, this microbes and also uh, certain of these uh, worms, they pass out in feces and that create problem. Soil feed should not be there and creep feed must have to be given. Offer feed at proper time and place. And fodder is the most, uh, it is having the rumen filling effect is very good and also good source of both uh, different type of nutrients are available. So in the leguminous forage, actually what we are giving more that uh, in cowpea or barsim or lucerne or beans or even uh, moringa or uh, ajola, these are actually being offered to many but uh, maize, oat, bajra, also they release in a little lesser way, but they have to be offered because without adequate energy, there will be no good quality of fermentation in rumen. Fencing tree, actually fencing tree, we must have to keep because they will uh, be adding to our uh, fodder and also they will be giving very uh, good quality of shade for feeding the animal. Then we can see that there are different plant like cowpea, barsim, uh, bean, uh, here or her or delicious bean or even bubble or these things actually they are very uh, good or uh, used by farmers. But nowadays moringa is being practiced. Why? Because it is having high quality of iron and also uh, means high quality of certain antioxidants. And that makes very, very good uh, quality fodder. 
and even we can uh, means make it uh, we can place it uh, at our uh, this fence and we get very good amount of fodder actually nowadays many persons are also feeding the sweet potato leaves because they are having a good source of protein and antioxidants along with vitamin a c and vitamin b6 and also certain of the minerals and fiber grows in a very faster rate a variety of sweet potato that is being cultivated that leaves are being uh, means propagated in a very fast and azolla also we can advocate them because it is having very high amount of uh, our this uh, uh, minerals and also proteins because about 20 to 25% of protein is there and also minerals is nearly about 20% but it should be uh, means for, uh, this uh, said dried before feeding these are lucerne and persim they are the most proteinous plants so they can uh, replace our concentrate in many ways you can see the non legumes and uh, i will advocate that we will feed a little bit neem leaves uh, every day so that it will be having a very good amount of this thing and also they release the burr leaves and also bamboo leaves in a very good way uh, mostly the boats uh, but sheep a little bit lesser extent and uh, for the hydroponics actually i am not advocating hydroponics to most of the persons because there are many problems associated with it in my opinion not much recommended for normal farmers so i acknowledge the various resources i have used for on this uh, photographs and information uh, and uh, i really thank uh, you all 